From Field Pass Hockey Southern Command, this is the Inside the SPHL Podcast. Here is your host, James Hayes. Welcome to this week's episode of Inside the SPHL. You guys are almost got me to episode 20 listening, so I haven't been canceled yet, so that's always a good thing. This week I have, uh, I got a couple of guests coming on the show, so you don't have to just listen to me ramble on about nothing like uh, like you did last week for a long time, and and uh, we're, we're going to start off, you know, I got, uh, it's been a while since I've had a Fayetteville Marksman player on, on here, the last one as y'all remember was Harrison Harper, so I figured it was time to bring another one, uh, another guy on, and the guy I got now, you know, he's in his sixth year pro. He's played all over the SPHL. He's uh, he's been up and down into the into the ECHL, and he's he's had a really great career. and uh, And he's he's a part of the reason why uh, why Fayetteville's doing what they're doing right now, and just kind of kind of storming through the league the way they are. But uh, before uh, before I ramble on without him on here, without any further ado, let me uh, introduce you guys to Don Olivari. Don, what's up, man? Hey, how's it going? Oh, not not too bad. How about you? I know uh, I know you guys had a had a lot of a lot of games this past weekend. So how, how what, what's the overall feeling right now? Yeah, I mean, body's a little sore right now. Uh, long long bus trip, but uh, I mean, we got four or six points, so we're happy with it. And recovery recovery time's only a couple of days before our next three and three. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's rough. We were talking a little before we started recording uh, that um, that there's a lot of that going on this year, and I think, uh, like you said, it has to do with a lot of the COVID probably, and and uh, I just imagine by the time the season uh, we're well we're we're well into the season now. There's a lot of guys that are probably their their legs aren't what they were back in uh, back in October. <laughs> but, yeah, it's these three and threes definitely they definitely catch up to you quick and especially with some of the older guys, you know, like myself. And uh, it definitely takes a toll on the body. I'll tell you yeah. That. Yeah. I can't call you old. I, I got you beat by six years, so I can't, <laughs> I can't say anything there, but, uh, but yeah, you're definitely a veteran in the league. And, uh, and so um, you, you grew up, uh, you, you were, you were born in, in Phillies. Does that make you a Flyers fan? Yeah. Flyers, Eagles, Phillies. That's that's awesome, yeah. So, uh, so, so I I'm hoping that maybe uh, maybe the Flyers spread a little bit of love because I'm originally from uh, the great state of Colorado, so I'm an Avalanche fan. I'm hoping Giroux comes uh, comes comes our direction. So, yeah, I mean, he definitely deserves it. That guy, uh, he deserves a ring. I'll tell you that. Yeah, yeah, he's something else. I mean, there's a lot of guys. I wouldn't mind Kevin Hayes coming over. I mean, there's just I don't know. I wish that that Philly core group could win something, you know, together. But uh, but hell, I don't know. It looks like it's not happening this year. Yeah, they're just having tough luck with injuries, man. I mean, they had, they had a great decor they brought in. And like you said, Hayes, Drew, and a bunch of guys just, just got the injury bug at the wrong time. Yeah, that sucks. So uh, so growing up was uh, what uh, – I guess you kind of somewhat grew up around the same time frame as me. Lindros was still uh, – was he still a flyer when you were growing up? Yeah, he was. He was uh, He's actually one of my uh, favorite flyers. Yeah. Okay. So, so at least I'm not too wrong here. Sometimes I get my timelines all jacked up. I bring guys on now and they're like 19 years old and I'm sitting here trying to think, what was that a couple of years ago? Well, who was on that team last night? <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but so, so, uh, so was, was, uh, when, when you started playing, what was, was it really like watching the Flyers games or was it something else that kind of inspired you to start playing the game? Um, so I have, uh, I have two older brothers and, uh, and I have a, I have a baby sister, but, um, my oldest brother, he uh, he played, you know, and just going to the rink, um, watching him play, um, you know, getting to getting to hang out with the guys. Like I was the little brother in the locker room when he was playing and stuff like that. I think that kind of got me into it, um, you know, just just watching him be. He was kind of the tougher guy, you know, threw his body around and stuff like that, and it, it kind of just got me interested. And, and then right from there, my dad put me in skates, and that's where it all started. Yeah, that's nice. That's awesome. Where, when, when, when you were a kid, uh, who, who, who was your your game? Tr- you were trying to model yours by. We all do it. I, I was trying to be uh, Chris Drury. So, who are you trying to be? <laughs> um, kind of pretty old, but uh, Bobby or you know that offensive, yeah. defensive, and um, guys laugh at me, but I love rushing the puck. I love getting into the play and being a part of the offense. Yeah, yeah. Hell, that's the that's the way of the league now. I mean, yeah. you look at guys like McCarr, Fox, all those. I mean, mm-hmm. you, you're ahead of your time. That's what it is. 
Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but no, it seems like it's worked out for you. You've 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 built a pretty healthy career. So let's uh let's talk um let's talk about going into into college. You played in a couple. You played in uh, at Utica College, and then you uh, you switched over to to Naz yeah, Nazareth. Sorry, I almost yep. messed up an easy word to say. <laughs> so but uh, so it looks like you you had a you had a pretty good uh, pretty good col- solid college career there. Um, what uh, what was different about the game? I like to ask guys, you know, as you're coming up through juniors and, and playing all that, what was different when you got into the college game for you? Was it faster, more physical? I mean, what what, what changed for you that made you have to change your playing style a little bit, if at all? Um, I don't think too much changed. I think maybe the only thing was um, uh, probably just the, the speed and the flow of the game. I think that was a little quicker than what juniors were. Um, you know, I think juniors was a little tougher, a little bit more, uh, you know, throwing your body around. And obviously, there was fighting in juniors and stuff like that. So that kind of canceled out in, in college. So you had to be a little bit more, you know, faster on your toes, a little bit more quicker with decisions and things like that. What's that like going from uh, going from playing, being able to drop the gloves and handle things on the ice to a league where you get suspended and kicked out of the game if you do that? I mean, that's. That's got to, I mean, it's, it's got to change things a little bit in your, in your mind, at least. Yeah. I mean, it's funny me, you know, I'm through juniors. I was kind of uh, an aggressor kind of, um, I did get in the guy's faces, you know, I didn't fight a lot. Um, but it was, uh, it's, it's more funny when you hit, when you hit, you know, college and guys, guys kind of get a little tougher behind, behind the cage, you know, cause they know <laughs> that you're not gonna be able to do anything yeah. and, and stuff like that. So during college, you know, you guys chirp each other, but I think I think college, I threw my weight around more. I threw more hits, you know, in college opposed to in juniors. I was kind of, you know, you're able to get in the guys' faces and kind of try and get under their skin more, you know. Yeah. So it was, it was definitely definitely a, a change. Yeah, you had you had to play physical in a different way instead of with your fist. You had to play with your body. So yeah. So yeah. But that that's got to be good. I mean, when because I mean we've all seen those guys out there on the ice. You know, the ones that are definitely hiding behind the cage because they know nothing's going to happen. So that's got to be a good feeling when you get to lay a good hit on one of them guys. I'd imagine. Yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. Uh, so so what? I mean, if if, if this is if this is a question you don't want to answer, you can you can we can move on. But what made you switch colleges halfway through? What uh, what what was that decision? Um, it's funny. A lot of people ask me that because um, you know Utica they they have a great program. They've I mean, when I was there, we were always uh, top 10 ranked. Um, they're number two right now, so they have a great program, ton of fans. The school is fantastic. Um, it's actually funny. Um, so going through college, you know, I didn't think I was going to play hockey after college. And one of my best friends went to Nazareth, and, um, you know, I grew up playing hockey with him pretty much my whole life. And uh, we figured we'd give it one last hurrah in college together and, and finish out our college years together. And so I made the move to go over to Nazareth and uh, they also have a great program. Um, you know, their education's great there also. And so I, I figure I'd just go over there and have uh, have a couple a couple years with him in college, you know, throw some back and just have a couple laughs and get yeah. to play hockey. And I mean, that that's why I did it. And, you know, it's, it's, it's just something that uh, I just didn't think I was going to play hockey anymore. So I wanted to, you know, end my hockey career with him. And like I said, yeah. have some – I have some cold ones and some laughs. Absolutely, and end on a high note, which uh, obviously, as as we see, since we're speaking right now, it, it didn't end there. But uh, <laughs> yeah. so, so uh, what uh, did it end for him there? Or is he out there playing somewhere still? No, he's actually uh, he's uh, coaching uh, Kings College right now, Division Three. Okay. So he's doing pretty well right now. After, nice, uh, nice. After playing. That's awesome. So, what was it that you were going to do once you got out of college? What'd you study in school? Uh, I was doing uh, criminal justice. I was, um, you know, I was trying to become a cop and uh, that or a police or a firefighter, which I'm actually still in the process for both as we speak. And, uh, you know, that's that's something that my dad was a cop growing up and I was around it, you know, my whole life. And it's something that I think that, you know, I'd be good at. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I see you policing people on the ice all the time, so I don't know why you couldn't do it in real <laughs> yeah, life. Yeah, so. I, mean, I mean, I try, you know, I try. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's cool. So so saying that, you 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 had no intent. Well, I don't know intention. I mean, everybody probably wants to continue their career. What was it that was was that kept you in the game at a college? Uh, it's actually funny. I had a I had another buddy 
he uh, he called me. He was in the Federal Hockey League at the time, and he asked me. He goes, "Hey, you want to come up and you know make a few bucks and play some hockey and just have some fun?" And you know, I right out of college, I'm like, "Why not? You know, why not? Why not try it?" And so it was actually funny. I, it was kind of beginning of my senior year, and I kind of just told my coach, like, "Hey, you know what? Like, I'm gonna take this opportunity to try it, see what happens." You know, and I kind of apologized to him, leaving on the spot, but. It's, you know, hockey was my passion, and I figured if I try it, it was, you know, what's the worst that could happen? I play a couple games, and and I don't like it, then I get my degree, get my job, and move on, you know? But, yeah, yeah. But it turned out it turned out to be a pretty good decision, and I was happy with it. Yeah, I'd say it would. I mean, what was it? What was that like? I mean, the 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 Fed is a whole different league than what uh, you're even playing in now. I mean, was it was it as crazy? And because I, I I didn't follow it back in fifteen sixteen, so I was I wasn't around this part of the country just yet. So I mean, was it as crazy as it kind of can get to be these days? Yeah, I think it was a little bit more uh, more absurd when I was yeah. there. Uh, you know, we we played with uh, the Berlin River Drivers, and um, you know, it was the fans were great. Like it was, it was, it was, it was fun playing there. Just living situations were kind of wild. Um, but like we had, we had a lot of D3 guys that all knew each other. And we were actually, a lot of us were, you know, actually kind of close friends that all played on the same fed team. So we kind of made our own fun, you know, and, and it was a, it was a lot of booze and they get, they get by, you know, so, yeah, yeah. but for hockey, it was just back then it, it was kind of crazy to hockey and, a lot of tough guys ran through that league and it was just there's there's war stories out there that that people just never would understand yeah no i i hear you i've, I've heard some of that stuff i'm like wow that's awesome that's uh <laughs> some of the stuff i've heard makes the uh what is it the danbury trashers it makes them look lame so. <laughs> <laughs> so so yeah so after that you uh that same season that you went to berlin was whenever you got called up to the uh to the mississippi river kings who as we all know kind of they're not around anymore unfortunately but um and you ended up playing in, in the playoffs with them that year. And, and uh, you you went along and, and number wise, it looks like you had a really good time. Was that what was what, what was that getting that call like going up a league? I mean, that had to have feel pretty good from a guy that didn't even want to think they were going to play hockey anymore. Right. Yeah, it's it's kind of funny. I mean, like, obviously, I didn't know what the federal league was when I went. and I had no idea what the, the Southern Pro League was. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I just got that call and. Uh, said they're calling me up and and man honestly i was like what, what the hell what am i getting called up to like i, I didn't you know i didn't understand yeah, and, yeah. hockey in mississippi <laughs> yeah and I, I talked to a few buddies and they were telling me about it i was like all right like i mean i'm gonna go obviously and see what it's about and you know what honestly that that mississippi that that team the organization um the boosters man that was probably the most fun couple of years I've had playing hockey and then then the group of guys there too. It was actually a great experience. Yeah, that uh that that was a good team. It's it was unfortunate to see that they had to fold. I heard Mississippi's getting a team back now though, but they're gonna go to the Fed. I think uh, I think that team's gonna be in Biloxi. I might be wrong though. But uh Yeah, I, I've been hearing the same uh, same rumors around too and I think Biloxi is what the what the rumor is. That's that's gotta be something I the that's a that's a gamble in town. So uh the, the the boys are gonna need they're gonna need an advance uh, on their checks. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> they gotta they gotta pull all, all kinds of stops for those guys, man. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I couldn't imagine travel either. Going from I mean, a lot of the teams in the Fed are way up north, and and then you got you know the River Dragons and Columbus, and mm-hmm. other than that, I mean, that's gonna be a lot of traveling, but. We're not here to talk about that. We're here to talk about you. <laughs> so, but, uh, but so, um, so yeah, you you came back the next year and and you played um, you you played with uh, Mississippi again. But uh, the the blunt of the season came with the Rivermen. How did how did you end up uh, in in uh, in Peoria that year? Um, I just, uh, just got traded there, and uh, you know that's how it goes in that league, yeah. and and um. Like I said, I mean that that um, that trade. It was kind of shocking to me. Not not the being traded part, just the whole knowing that you you're able to get traded and stuff yeah. like that. And when it happens, that you're like, holy shit! I got to pack up my stuff and you know drive 16, 17 hours at the next spot. You know, yeah. it's, it's it's crazy, and, and you're telling your parents about it, and they're just they're mind blown, and it, it's crazy. But uh, when I got to Peoria, Peoria was a good time. I mean, we had a phenomenal team. 
that that team was tremendous and um you know we came up short in the finals and uh but um like i said it's it just you're moving from you know one group of hockey hockey buddies to a next and everybody takes you in it's just one big family no matter what team you go to yeah yeah definitely and then did i mean what what's that like whenever you had to go back and face your old teammates that season uh, after you got traded i mean that's got to be awkward right off the bat but then i'm sure it's business as usual but what's that what's that feeling like yeah i mean guy, guys make fun of me for it but uh you know i ever uh, during warm-ups you know i, I talked to a lot of guys you know I, I mean i've been around you know so i know a lot of guys i taught them in the warm-ups and stuff like that have a couple laughs but at the end of the day when the game comes man like you, you know you're your buddies but when you're playing it's you know you got to do what you got to do for your team to win and you know you're the guy on the other team that you talk to or whatever you know he understands that too and and that's just how it goes and at the end of the game you know you can have a couple of cold ones after laugh about a few plays and, and then, yeah. you know, the, the next night it's back to war. Yeah. You know? Yeah, exactly. You, if, if you, you might have to punch your friend in the mouth, you might not, who knows? It just depends yeah. on how the game goes. <laughs> so, but uh, so that was also the first year, I think. Yeah. That was the first year you got called up to the coast. You went and played uh, with the Missouri Mavericks that year. So that, mm-hmm. that had to be a pretty big moment for you there. Getting, getting called up for the second time in your career or second, yeah, second time up. Uh, mm-hmm. What? Well, tell me a little bit about your time initially in the ECHL when you got there. Um, that's definitely different. It's uh, I mean, it's it's exciting when you get called up. You're you're looking forward to it, and obviously you want to make your first good impression. But it's obviously it's a little nerve, a little just like you just got butterflies, man. You walk in, you, you know, there's guys that are drafted, guys that are in NHL deals, guys on A deals. It's just a whole different business up there compared to, you know, the Southern Pro League. And and you kind of want to – I kind of just kept my head down, you know, said, hi, how you doing, met guys, try to make a good impression. But once once I got on that ice, you know, I, I wanted to show them what I had so I can, you know, I can stick and, and be hopefully an everyday guy there. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, how, how – uh... How hard was it adjusting to to that? I mean, once you got out there, I know you said. I mean, once you get out there, you're trying. Was it was there was there an adjustment period, kind of trying to figure out the the ECHL as opposed to what you were used to? Yeah, it was kind of crazy. So when I got called up, um, I was actually on a road trip with Peoria when I got called up, and um, I uh, all I had was a duffel bag. I had you know a polo, some slacks, and a t shirt and shorts, and a pair of shoes. You know, that's that's all I had when I got called up. So it was, it was kind of, uh, it was a hectic situation, um, you know, uh, trying to get some of my stuff there. I didn't even have a suit for the games. You know, I had to, I had to figure out a suit situation and stuff. So it, it's, it's pretty hectic, but, uh, like I said, the guys that I, I live with out there, they were pretty good with it. They let me borrow, you know, a shirt and tie and stuff and they were, they were good with it. And, um, you know, when you step on that ice, it's, it's, it's definitely a big difference from uh the sp guys are guys are bigger guys are stronger guys are um you know a lot more smarter hockey wise and it it is a different game when you get called out yeah yeah for sure so um so after that moving on to the next year you uh you were all over the place the next really the next couple of years you had you had call-ups up and down and uh you played the next year with evansville and you were back in mississippi for uh for a while and you uh, you went up to Norfolk, played twenty one games there. Uh, you kind of split your split your time between Norfolk and uh, and Mississippi, and then next the next season you had uh, thirty six more games in Norfolk. They must have seen something up there that uh, that they liked about you. I mean, Tana, tell me about your time in Norfolk. Oh man, Norfolk that that, that was uh, that was fun, man. Living living in a mansion on the beach, you know, you can't <laughs> complain about that. No, but um, no, the coaches were great. Um, you know, they, they gave, they gave guys opportunities and basically they put it in the guy's hands. It's, you know, it was, it was my chance. It was my spot to lose pretty much. And, um, they just gave my opportunity. I excelled with it and, and we just went from there and everything kind of worked out and went into place. That's awesome. Tell me about this mansion you lived in on the beach. That sounds pretty awesome. (laughs) Yeah, it was, it was like, um, it was, I think it was a, three or four floor house nice um, we had we had five guys living in it um we had a backyard like a backyard with a pool in it and then right behind us was the beach 
it was it was incredible man I, it was it was basically a vacation home you know and it was it was it was gorgeous it was it's something you look forward to after the rank is going back to your place and be able to go to the beach or you know doing just doing the fun things out there yeah definitely I imagine you're sitting there feeling like man i made it you know from the from the housing situation in the fed to to living in norfolk i mean that's that's a huge yeah, change right there man yeah it's definitely it was definitely a big step and it was it was awesome I, I had no complaints about it that's awesome you got any good stories from your time in norfolk yeah i it's funny uh me and brent sherwood we 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 tell some of the guys but we kind of put this one in the vault but i'll let you have it at a my time there we um we went to orlando for uh you know we went to florida for i don't know i think it was like a two-week trip you know play uh i think we played like jacksonville in orlando or something so we went to orlando and um we got there uh, a day early you know some of the guys they went to disney world some of the guys went to the beach and um me and me and brent went to uh went and got some margs and had some mexican food with the the equipment guy you know the, the broadcaster a couple of a couple of guys that work for the team so uh we're sitting there eating drinking and you know it's like i don't know it's like two three o'clock in the afternoon me and sure we're like we'll cut her off at seven we got a game tomorrow or whatever you know a couple a couple marks deep we're looking at each other we're like man when's the next time we're gonna be in orlando you know you want to <laughs> you go grab a couple more so we went out and then uh there was a couple guys a couple um other guys that played in the SP that were on the team at the time and they they kind of came out with us and we had a we had a pretty good time that night just boys being boys and man we didn't get back to the hotel until probably like man probably like three four in the morning we had oh, a pregame wow. skate at I think at like 10 o'clock you know and <laughs> I'm sitting there uh, my roommate my roommate wakes me up man and and um instantly I'm just in the bathroom just just over the toilet you know and <laughs> I'm sitting there. I'm having he. I'm having. I'm having terrors, man. And so, um, I texted my text the trainer. I'm like, hey, I'm not feeling good. I, I think I got food poisoning from the Mexican joint I was at. And, you know, <laughs> trying to, trying yeah. to, you know. <laughs> yeah. So he goes, all right. He goes, just stay home, whatever. So uh, I'm in there, and I'm, I'm, I'm just puking, whatever. The coach comes in my room, drop off medicine for me, and. And he goes, you gonna be able to play tonight? And I was like, yeah, he goes, I'll, I'll be there. And like, I want to play. So I step in the locker room. My captain at the time grabbed me, pulled me aside, man, and ripped me a new one because he knew he knew I went out because all the other guys made it the pregame skate. I was the only one that didn't make it. <laughs> so you know, he he ripped me. I never got it so hard from a captain, man. He was just feeding me, and I'm just like, all right, I get it. Like, you know, like I'm, I'm not in the mood, you know. <laughs> So finally, coach is like, "All right, you're good to go." I'm like, "Yeah, I'm good to go." So we're playing, and um, man, I'm actually having a pretty good game. You know, everybody says playing guilty is a thing, and you know, playing guilty is a thing. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, it's funny. So the other the other guy that I was playing with, he um, he actually uh, we're sitting there, we're talking about it, like, man, like we can't wait those games over, and it's actually like a close game, one goal game. You know, they have a sold out barn. So a couple minutes left in the game, I happened to score the tying goal. And, uh, you know, the, the boys are going nuts. And I, I had a two-point night that night. And we go into overtime. And me and my buddy are looking at each other like, oh, holy, you know, like, <laughs> like when's this going to end? You know, we, yeah. we want to go back to the hotel. <laughs> That's funny. He goes out and he actually scores the first shift. So the two guys that are hung over, you know, contributed pretty well to the team. And <laughs> And everybody's just laughing about it, and uh, and then ever, ever since then we've been calling it the, Me the Mexican flu, and, and it's just been a it's just been a laugh of a story, man. And we we That's put that awesome. one on the ball, but yeah, I mean, I I'll give you that one, and I'm sure my fiance is gonna watch this, and she's gonna hear about that one, and you know, give me some shit about it, but yeah, <laughs> that's that's great. Was, hey, but you yeah. had a good game. Moral of the story: you played well. <laughs> Yeah, man, a playing guilty is a thing, you know. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, I've, I've, heard, I've heard that before. So, uh, yeah, you, you, you only solidified that. That's great, though. I mean, you, you almost probably feel like you got to go do something, otherwise, you're going to get sent sent home, right? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. That's what. That's the only thing that was in the back of my head, man. Is like I can't f up or I'm done, you know. And so, it, it were, I guess it worked out in the end. <laughs> yeah, the, those margaritas will sneak up on you. I've been there a few times where I'm just oh, waking man. up the next morning. I'm like, what the hell? 
<laughs> but, uh, yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll tell you what. I definitely learned my lesson, and then uh, none of that ever again. <laughs> no, no, not again, not again. Yeah, no, <laughs> I, I hear you, man. I hear you. So, um, so moving on, uh, moving on. You, um, the next season was where the nineteen twenty season, which you guys were freaking rolling along, and uh, and COVID decided it was going to destroy everything. But uh, that was whenever you landed in Fayetteville for the first time. And um, so was Fayetteville, I, I mean, I know you're, well, you had Quad City and Pensacola the year before, but uh, was Fayetteville a place that you had kind of wanted to go and play or did it just kind of fall into your lap? So it kind of uh, just fell into my lap. It was one of those things where, um, you know, me and my fiance were trying to figure out things. And, um, you know, I got a couple of calls from some teams and, I was trying to find the best situation. And um, at the time, Corey Melker was the assistant there. And, you know, he was my captain in Evansville. And, you know, we played a couple of years together. And and we, me, him, and Jesse Kalecki, we we talked probably for like an hour and a half, man. And, and you know, they they just made every, they just made me feel comfortable coming here and then made me feel like this is a spot where, you know, like I'm wanted and, and, um, I can contribute to this team in, in many different ways. And they saw that and everything just clicked. And and it's kind of funny because back in the day, you know, Fave, it was one of the last places guys wanted to go. You know, it wasn't it wasn't the best back in the day. And and when I got here, man, it was it was tremendous. It just the renovations they've done in their locker room, the rank, uh, all the all the reaching out they do and then grab all, a bunch of fans' attention. Like, you know, we're we're getting a decent crowd every night now and and just just how involved we are with, with with the fans and everything everything was just it was just great everything fell into place and and that team that team just went off that year and and covid struck and it was just it was definitely a downer you know we were yeah. we were looking forward to seeing Peoria in the finals that was pretty much what what we were looking at in the future yeah and it was looking exactly like that's how it was going to play out i mean you guys were just rolling along and yeah, unfortunately, I mean, there was it never hit. I guess it just wasn't meant to be. But uh, but I'm not yeah. trying to say that you guys are uh, you're not slack, you know, this year. I mean, you guys have been rolling around. I've got a chance to watch you guys come down to Birmingham a few times because I don't think I told you before. But uh, the other my my other gig with field pass is covering the Bulls here uh, here mm -hmm. in Alabama. But um, I got a chance. I mean, you guys. You guys got things clicking, and and I, I always joke on this podcast that uh, you you guys play Roanoke, you know, every game, and then every once in a while you go on a little vacation and, and go play somebody somewhere else. But uh, yeah. tell me a little bit about that experience playing Roanoke. I mean, I don't even remember the number anymore, but it seems like you guys play them every other weekend. Yeah, I think we're at like I think we're at ten right now, but um, it's tough. Like like I said, like the whole you know the whole COVID protocols. And, um, that keeps us from playing, you know, Peoria, Vermillion, Evansville. Um, so, I mean, that's, that's why I'm assuming we play, you know, Roanoke 10 times and, and making like 10 times and, yeah, you know, but that Roanoke battle, just like, it, it, it <laughs> it's just crazy, man. It's, it's every night, it's just a battle. Every, every night it's, it's, it's war. And, you know, it, it definitely build up um, the hate for each other. And, um, you know, every night the teams just want to kill each other. And, and, you know, even, even the coaches get after it, you know, Melker and Brands even get after, after each other here and there. And, yeah, but, um, you know, it's, it's, it's just crazy. I mean, on our end, though, as players from both teams, it, it kind of gets exhausting, you know, playing the same team over and over again. But at the end of the day, it's kind of fun because you build that, that hatred between each other, you know, every night. And, and that's what makes it a good game every single night. Yeah. Yeah. If it wasn't a rivalry before this year, it's definitely a rivalry now. I mean, fans, oh, yeah. players and everything. I mean, it's, oh, yeah. they're, they're fun games to watch, but, uh, but yeah, it just seems like every time I look down, like, I don't know, are you guys playing each other this weekend? I haven't even looked ahead at everybody's. No, <laughs> it's actually funny. So uh, we're all from them till I think like about like, second to last, or no i think we don't play them till uh, the last weekend of the year so i mean we're, we're pretty happy that we don't see them for a while and i'm sure yeah. they're happy they don't see us for a while yeah, exactly you know we're finally getting in other teams like knoxville pensacola we got quad this week so it's it's nice it's a nice change up here yeah definitely you guys uh you guys are you guys have been rolling along pretty well this season i mean um 
what uh what what's going right i guess i should say that i know that's a stupid question but uh but i'm gonna roll with it anyways no um you know i think uh you know we've, we we got a couple guys back from the coast and um you know the coaches they did really well recruiting a few guys bringing guys in and um you know this team um we're pretty i think everybody's pretty much committed to staying here for the year which is pretty much unheard of you never really here guys staying for the year you know guys are always trying to go up and further yeah. career which which you're happy about like you want to see guys move on but i think we just have um a big dedication from guys this year and i think um all 23 guys or how many guys we have or are, are dedicated to you know trying to win a ring this year and and it's for me being an older guy it's it's um you know i'm happy seeing that from the younger guys and how dedicated they are because it fires me up every single night and you know it, i'll stick my neck out for these guys every single night just because of the dedication they show for me you know yeah that's awesome i mean like they it it, it seems too. you know a lot of these guys you know they'll get called up and uh and then they'll just go sit on the bench for 11 games and maybe get two minutes so i mean mm -hmm. Why, why, why leave whenever you know you're going to get playing time every night? I mean, yeah, it might be the next league down, but you got a shot at doing something special, and that, that's that's awesome that that's what's going on in Fayetteville right now. I mean, mm -hmm. when, when when guys in the locker room start seeing that, I imagine, like you said, I mean, you're you're you're, you're going to go to bat for them every night. I mean, that's that's got to be a special feeling to be a part of something like that. Yeah, it's it's awesome, and like you said, I mean, I I, I get it. You know, when I was younger, I I, I took the Cobs too, and. And, you know, in Missouri, there was, there was a, like a 10 game stretch where I didn't play, you know, and, and there was, um, in the back of my mind, you know, I could have went back and, and played and which I did, but at the end of the day, I get why guys stay up there. You know, they're just waiting for their, their chance. You know, you never know when the opportunity is going to happen. So yeah, you just, just guys just don't want to pass it up. And, and I understand that, you know, you, you can't get mad at guys who are trying to further their career. No, not at all. Not at all. I mean, that's that's one of the toughest things. You know, I'll post stuff out on Twitter and this, that, about players getting called up, and fans will get mad at me. For one, I'm not mm -hmm. the one that called them up. <laughs> for two, I mean, you got to be happy for guys. I mean, because that's that's the ultimate goal. You know, everybody in their career, no matter if it's hockey or whatnot, they want to take those steps up. So you can't be mad about it, but you also can't be mad if guys want to stick around. Like, you know, it seems like a lot of guys are doing there in Fayetteville. So, mm -hmm. so that's that, that's awesome. So tell me a little bit about playing with uh, with Harrison Harper. He's a great, he's a, he's a big personality, and and I gotta ask, I had him on the podcast. He's an awesome dude. But tell tell me about playing with him. I mean, that, that's that's got to be. I, I just imagine he's every bit the same personality that he is. You know, when you listen to him on his podcast or when I was talking to him, he's man. He's like I don't even know how to explain him, dude. He's one of a kind, man. He's he's always always happy always yelling always always just so upbeat you know getting the guys going um you know we we could be down 10 nothing going to locker room and he could be you know upbeat trying to keep the guys positive and he just has a huge personality man and, it, and it's awesome it, it kind of loosens up some guys you know and kind of kind of opens up some guys that are kind of quiet you know and He's he's kind of the life of the party, and and we all love it, man. Every every single guy loves him here, you know. And he's uh, he he he's honestly probably one of my favorite guys in the team. Yeah, I mean, a guy like that. Every team's got to have a guy like that. I mean, I don't. They don't. Every team doesn't have one, but it just seems like those are the glue guys, right? I mean, is that the right kind of terminology <laughs> to say? Is that the guy that kind of sticks everybody together in there? Yeah, I mean, he he definitely is a glue guy, and um. You know, and, and even on the ice, he he does what he has to do. He he does what he's told, um, and he's he's one of those guys that'll stick up for any guy on the team as well. And, and you know that that fires us up, you know, because we'll go out the bat for him any night, any night, you know. So he's the, he's definitely the glue of the team, and and I mean, man, we love the guy. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. I had to throw that in there because I had him on here. Maybe he listens to the podcast. He was on it once. He should listen to it. I told him I listened to his. So it's only fair, right? <laughs> yeah, you know? the, the, the project. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. The project. Yeah. 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 So it's, it's great. I, I, I always recommend people go and listen to that one. It's hilarious. If it, <laughs> but uh, he's, he's like a pretty he's random a, guy, man. Yeah. Yeah. He's all over the place. He's definitely not talking about <laughs> hockey. He doesn't want it to be a hockey podcast and it's not, but uh, yeah. He's, he's great. So, um, so I guess, uh, 
kind of kind of closing things out here i got i got one more question if, if you could pick you know a, a favorite moment so far through your hockey career i mean where 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 would you put that or or is that just kind of one of those things that there's just been too many that you, you can't narrow it down are you uh you mean just like a favorite moment throughout playing. The whole, yeah throughout um, ever since you've been your pro career hell if you even want to talk about when you were playing in you know juniors or whatnot i just any kind of moment yeah, man, honestly, I mean, I've had a lot. Um, See, that's a dumb question, it, too. You can tell no, me that. It, it, it's not. <laughs> it, I mean, it, get, it, gets you, it gets me thinking, you know, like throughout, you know, how many years have I played, you know, and never really thought about one moment. But honestly, I think I think maybe just get my first East Coast call up and, you know, call my mom and dad and tell my brothers and, and my sister and stuff and how happy everybody was for me and, and I think just getting that call was probably, you know, the highlight of my life. And yeah. I think like, you know, not a lot of people can say that, you know, they've been paid to play sports and, and, you know, I, I mean, making it to the East coast like that is a, in my eyes is a pretty big accomplishment and, you know, and, and it helps me, you know, it, it, at the end of the day, you know, playing hockey my whole life and then, and all the, blood sweat and tears you know it's worth it in the end you know yeah yeah absolutely i mean and that is huge too and i mean i know we, i always joke you no know, half people don't even know what the sphl is or the federal league i mean everybody knows what the echl is so i mean that's mm -hmm. a huge moment so yeah absolutely so um so jumping out of hockey like i said we're going to close things up here i don't want to keep to keep you too much but tell me tell me a little bit about uh about who you are outside of the game. What, what, what do you do when you're not playing hockey? Are you a golfer? I mean, what, uh, what's, what's going on out there? Yeah, I, uh, I'm a big golfer. Love it. Um, it's kind of funny. You guys make fun of me, but uh, big, big softball guy, slow pitch softball guy you know, I'm, uh, on a few teams. And um, it's, it's, a, it's a blast. It's a nice getaway from, from hockey. You know, it's a, it just, it's fun to be able to bullshit with, with your your buddies from home and 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 just uh going to tournaments and stuff and it's a good time um golf's a blast i love it man i'll i'll go and then whenever anybody asks i'll go i'll never say no to golf um, yeah yeah and then other than that you know i just i just just work out and just hang out with my fiance and my two pups and and just live, live, live my best life. <laughs> yeah, definitely. That's awesome, man. Do you spend your your summers back home in Philly, or uh, are you staying down there in Fayetteville lately? No, I got. I go home every every summer. I go home. You know, like I said, uh, I'm getting married in May, so I got a got a lot of things to to deal with, trying to figure out wedding stuff and you know and all that. So uh, probably go home here and and uh, get married and figure out if, if I want to do one more year or not, you know? Yeah, yeah definitely. <laughs> Maybe you can have a, a, a nice shiny championship trophy as your centerpiece at the wedding. So <laughs> if I win a ring, you know, she can take back the one she bought and just put the, put the winning <laughs> ring on my finger and I'll be happy with it. There you go. That's awesome. So, uh, <laughs> so I, I see, uh, I see you got, uh, the, the, was that the pew or the few? What's the what's, few? Yeah. What's what, uh, what's that all about, man? That's, there's gotta be a story there. So no, it's my uh, my buddy Drew Beach. Um, it's his clothing company. He um, it's like a, like kind of a CrossFit clothing company, you know. And he um, his company sponsors a few uh, UFC fighters, and uh, I like to wrap it around. Um, you know, he's a big hockey fan. You know, he's making a uh, few on hockey stuff. Um, and I kind of just try and wrap it around, try and get his company out there. I mean, his, his I mean. I don't really need to wrap it around. His company's pretty, pretty big. I mean, he's got some, you know, he's got some NFL guys wearing his stuff and oh, nice and stuff. Yeah. So, um, you know, I like, I just like to, like I said, like just wrap, uh, wrap it around and, and get it out there. And uh, I mean, every, all the clothes are comfortable. Every, every, you know, shorts, pants, hoodie, shirt, everything I own from them are the most comfortable clothes I've ever worn. So it's, um, he's been pretty successful with it and, you know, and, like I said, I, I like just repping his company and yeah, definitely. A, so, People can show yeah. us the, the website, uh, the few.com or something like that, or what? Yeah. Um, I think it's uh fuelhunt.com. Okay. And, uh, you just look it up and you know, he has an app and everything too. So you can, 
Awesome. Check it out. Yeah. yeah. So all four of my listeners, I need you guys to go check that out and buy some stuff and tell them that Don sent you. So, yeah. so, <laughs> so but, uh, but that's, uh, that's all I got for you, man. I really appreciate you taking time. I know, I mean, I know you got to be tired. You had a lot of games going on. You got a lot more coming up and, and the season's long. And so I, I really appreciate you taking a little bit of your time to talk with me and, and tell your story. And, uh, I, I wish you the best of the luck, you and the rest of the marksmen. Um, I, it's your fun team to watch, and, and I wish you guys great luck going through the rest of the year. And hopefully, we can do this again somewhere down the road. Yeah, I appreciate it. And uh, maybe down the road, I can spell out some uh, more war stories, you know. Yeah, definitely. If I hear you're retiring, I'm definitely calling you up. You're coming back. <laughs> I'll, definitely, I'll definitely spill the beans if I retire. I'll tell you that. But, um, <laughs> No, I appreciate being on and, and uh, hopefully we can do it again. And, and um, you know, good luck to uh, your Bulls the rest of the season. And, you know, hopefully uh, you can be there when we win a ring. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So I, I, <laughs> I, I picked you and the Bulls at the beginning of the season to go to the finals. I mean, the Bulls, obviously, that's the homer in me. But uh, but I think you guys are proving me right halfway on, on one of them. So so thank yeah. you for that. <laughs> but, uh but all right, man. And then uh, I, I forgot to tell you, congratulations, too, on getting married this year. I'm sure we won't talk uh, before that. So congratulations on that. That's a huge moment uh, in, in anybody's life. So, yeah, so I appreciate that's awesome that. Too. But, appreciate all right, that. man. All right. I guess I'll talk to you soon then. All right. Have a good one, man. All right. There you have it. That was Don Oliveri uh, from the Fayetteville Marksman. Awesome dude. Um, really appreciated him coming on. I hope you guys enjoyed uh listening to it as much as I enjoyed talking to him. And uh, you never want to see a guy retire, but, um, but I kind of want to hear some of those stories. So I'm, I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to when he does finally retire. So maybe we can, maybe we can sit back down and, and hash out some of those stories he was talking about. But, uh, but yeah, that's it. That's it for him. That's it there. Um, I got another guest to come on, kind of talk some league stuff with me here and uh, some playoff scenarios you guys may have seen him in and around uh, on uh, on Facebook, talking things, helping people out. Um, he actually uh, he he was the reason that I when I seen one of his posts, he was one of the reasons that I decided I was going to try to do math and give you guys playoff scenarios. And yes, I know, I know, some of you are telling me right now I was wrong. I was one point off because I forgot tiebreaker scenarios. That's why Huntsville clinched a game before I was supposed before I said they would. I'm sorry. That's why you don't listen to me. But uh, but anyways, so uh, going back to this, so my uh, my guest, he uh, he worked with the Making Mayhem last year. He's an awesome guy. He's been in and around hockey. He works with the Columbus River Dragons in the uh, in the FPHL. And without further ado, because he's been waiting on me for a while, welcome to the show, Dana Barker. How you doing, How Dana? Going? I look better on that, and I look better here than I do backstage. That's, that's a lot better. I'm trying to fool down. I don't know if you saw me in the, when you were talking to Oliveri. I was sitting there fooling with the lighting and everything. I was trying to uh, I gotta get this flow. I got to get the mug looking good. Yeah, yeah, I, I hear you, man. It's I'm always doing the same thing too, and then whenever I pull it up to the main screen, I'm like, well, now I look incredible compared to what I looked at. Well, not that I look incredible, but y- yep. you see what I mean now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, I'm right down 280 from you. I'm actually at home in Auburn, Alabama, right now. We oh, okay. uh, you know, 40 minute drive from Columbus, so uh, kind of in yeah. the uh, in the center of the league. You know, back in back in the beginning of the SPHL days, they talked about having the league office in Columbus because it was geographically in the center and a lot of the uh, referees actually the first few years had an apartment in Columbus because it was easy to get to Pensacola or to the, uh, the old Gulf coast teams, the old, you know, Biloxi, Lafayette, those teams down there. So uh, yeah, I'm not the center anymore. Uh, Peoria quad city, Evansville. Thank you. But uh, (laughs) yeah, yeah. Vermilion. (laughs) County. Yeah. Vermilion. Got, I got to feed the Bobcats. Yeah. Yeah, now it now I, I feel like maybe Huntsville. Now Knoxville might be might be the center point now. Yeah, you're gonna pitch somewhere in there. So. But uh, but yeah, so I don't know. The league's changed a lot since then too. I mean, we've seen a lot of teams come and go. I mean, uh, and now I see a team picking up in Mississippi, and I wish that team was going to be in the SPHL. But uh, but you can't blame people. Uh, budgets. It's a lot cheaper to run a team in the Fed than it is the SPHL, from yep. what I'm told. And people people wonder why they're like you got teams in New York, you got teams in Michigan. Why? How the hell is it cheaper in the Fed to run a team? But the player expenses are cheaper, uh, the games are cheaper, and you know usually we come, you know, you go up and play. Like for example, Columbus went to Danbury, Connecticut, and played a three game set this weekend. 
So it's kind of like baseball. You play a three game series, a, you know, a two game series, and those make for fun. You know, familiarity broods contempt. So, you know, by the time you get your third and three, you got two teams chomping at the bit and it turns into, you know, sometimes a uh, nice little uh, brawl fest there toward the end. We've had a few of those. So uh, the, the Fed now, I think, is where the SB was maybe 10, 15 years ago when it started as far as the level of hockey is concerned. It's, it's, it has been so weird, you know, with, with COVID and everything. You see a lot of Fed names now in the SB on SB rosters. Yeah. Like uh, a Cody Karpinski, who plays you know, number one goal for Pensacola. He played for the River Dragons two years ago, just to name a few. So yeah. it, it's kind of weird how that reversal of fortunes kind of been, you know, working for Macon last year. That was basically an East Coast team. That was the ECHL team. You oh, know, absolutely. I, not yet. Don't want to – I mean, I, I hate the – I don't want to down the Macon fans, but I don't know if they realized the level of hockey they watched last year. It, it was yeah. second – There was it was without peer in the SPHL. I think in terms of a team, all the great Peoria teams. Sorry, sorry, John Gee. I think that Macon team was probably the best team we've had in the SB, you know, in the in the history of the league. Yeah. But I digress. <laughs> it, it, it it was good. I mean, you're a little you're you're a little bit of a homer there. I mean, you were working for the team. Right, no, no, I agree. Yeah. They were they were great. They were a great team. I mean, a lot of the teams. I mean, well, a lot of the teams. There's only five of them playing, but I mean, there was so much ECHL talent last year. It was, yeah. It was insane. I think a lot of fans forget that that we're watching last year, and they're a little disappointed, you know, this year with some of the stuff that's going on. And I mean, it's it's a different year. We're getting back to normal, somewhat normal. We're starting to see. I mean, we're easing our way into it, and and yeah. so yeah, yeah. But uh, and I was so talking to. Oh, sorry, James. My bad. I was talking yeah. to Clay Coleman. You know, Freak Daddy in Huntsville. If you guys know him at the uh, the Havoc Games, that's how they took off. I mean, they had basically the same roster, Molossic. Kaiser, all those guys played last year in that five team league, you know, and Glenn took his lumps, you know, and they finished up fourth place and Macon swept them out, but they played with each other. You know, they've had 42 games under their belt and these guys, you know, you had a year out due to COVID. So that's how they got the jump on everybody else. You know, now Peoria's catching up to him, Knoxville's catching up to him with all very, you know, Fayetteville's on freaking fire right now, too. So I think they're getting caught up to, but I think that's how they got up to that start right out the gate because. They just knew each other. The chemistry. You can't put a price on chemistry. Absolutely. That's that. Yeah, that that was something that I said earlier in the year. I mean, these guys, they've they've played together and not just last year for so long. A lot of those guys right. have played together. So. So, yeah, that definitely makes a difference. And uh, and so and then and I mean, Huntsville's still no pushover. Uh, they, they did somehow fall to third in the league. And and that's because of the tiebreaker scenarios, even though Peoria right. hasn't clinched yet. <laughs> But uh, they're ahead of Huntsville, but uh, but I I'm I'm not counting Huntsville out. I mean, everybody's kind of oh, no. tra- they they want to trash them because they lost to the Bulls and say I've I've seen a lot of people on the internet, which I don't know why I read a lot of that stuff. You know, some people out there they just same. They, they just same. That, I don't I, know why I fall for it. Yeah, but uh, but yeah, I mean Huntsville is not out of it. I mean Huntsville is <laughs> is a great team, and the Bulls right now are a team that is. They're, they're, every game they've been playing for the last couple of weeks has been a playoff game to them. I mean, they're they're trying to get back in it, and and so yeah, they're going to put up a fight. And Huntsville got them over. They didn't even let them score Friday nights. So I don't know what people are talking about, but uh, but yeah. So let's uh, let's talk a little bit about the league. Let's kind of. I, I like to get guys that I bring on. I've had uh, Joel Silverberg. I've had Brad Harrison from here come on, and I just kind of like to get a get an idea, you know, different perspectives of teams around the league. And so um, we can just kind of walk through, I don't know, whatever be easier. We can walk through team by team or we can go over games. I don't know. I'm the, I might be the only person that's crazy enough to try to watch all the games in one weekend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. James, you're, you're the, the DJ. I'm the rapper. Whatever you want, whatever music you play, I'll, I'll rap to it. So, so, so we'll, let's, let's go. Well, let's let's uh, let's talk about Macon since uh, since yep. that's a team you were familiar with, and and uh, kind of give me give me your take on where they're at and 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 what's going on down there in in, in Macon Central. Yeah, Georgia. I mean, you know, they had a hundred percent roster turnover. They didn't have one player return from last year. Uh, Kevin Kerr wasn't didn't return either. Uh, a lot of that last year, I think, was Kevin Kerr opening up his Rolodex and opening up his black book and saying, "Hey." COVID right now, you know, COVID sucks. Only half the job, you know, only half the teams in North America were playing last year. So you only had half the spots. Come on down here to Macon, Georgia. Let's do this thing. Damn the torpedoes. Let's make a run. So I think once everything else opened back up, a lot of those guys, you see a Derek to I was looking with my son on the uh, league leaders 
earlier. The Padage leads the ECHL in uh, defensive categories. He's, he's near the top. Uh, you, know, you got Jake Toit, who's rocking in Wichita right now. So those guys are back with their ECHL teams. And uh, I think it was just with Kersey coming, leaving, and with uh, Desjardins not really having a full offseason either, I think there was just some uh, – really wasn't – enough time to get a full team together. And I think, you know, with guys with a lot of federal league names in the SB, I just, I say there's just a dearth of quality professional hockey players right now. And I think Macon fell behind the eight ball because of that. And yeah. they just didn't catch up. And I think it's, you know, I, I, I don't see him catching up. I mean, I hate to, hate to say that, but I mean, I, I don't see any good quality guys out there because there's just not a, not a lot of movement right now, or there, there's movement, but it's movement up, not so much as, as opposed to movement, you know, in the SB or in the Fed. Yeah, yeah. It's almost like there's two expansion teams right here. I mean, like you said, yeah. Megan's a whole new team. It's almost, and, and a lot of people don't realize that, I mean, yeah, Caleb Cameron's back. He's been there for, you know, he's 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 a person name players know, but, uh, but one guy, as much as you want to believe it, can't change the whole team, and and I mean, it's just I don't know. It's it, to me, it's almost like there's been two expansion teams and, and it's tough. But but for some reason, Macon has Birmingham's number. They didn't this last weekend, but Macon has beaten Birmingham a lot more than they really should have in in, in I guess in, in everybody's eyes, not just mine, because but uh, but I mean, but. But who knows? I mean, I, I don't know. I hope that team go. I hope that team uh, can start clicking because I don't like seeing really bad team. I know there's always going to be a 10th and 11th place team in the league, but I don't right. want to see, you know, teams that are only winning three, four five, six games. I mean, that's not good for anybody. And making, I mean, I don't know. The attendance is just I, it wasn't that great last year either. But uh, but this year with them not winning a lot, I mean, you got to think uh, if if they can't get things turned around here pretty soon, they're they're. Megan might lose a hockey team again, and and that's just me speculating. I'm not uh, I'm not saying anything to my four listeners. I'm not saying I've heard <laughs> Megan's leaving. Don't take yeah. my words and blow them up. I don't want that that team to leave. I love that franchise. I love uh, I love a lot of the players on there. I mean, but uh, but yeah, it's it's tough. I mean, wouldn't you think it's yeah? And out of respect for the ownership group that gave me a you know gave me the opportunity last year to still work in pro hockey. Um, you know, I'm really not going to, I don't want to speculate either or say much uh, yeah. for your, your four listeners either. Yeah. Or the people <laughs> watch later on, but uh, I will give two names to you. Zach Smith, Anna Marie Summers. They are basically the front office of Macon right now and they kick ass and they rock at everything they do. Uh, Zach, for example, if you looked on the uh, message boards last <laughs> week, he up ice after a fight. He does PA, he does the auctions, he does everything. So you have two, people in the front office that basically kept that front office afloat in terms of off the ice. So, you know, you, you awesome. got some rock stars there. So there's, there's some people that deserve to have a good organization over there. I, I will say that much. And, you know, yeah. again, they gave me a shot last year to uh, come over there and, and do my thing because the federal league was up in question. And finally the, uh, you know, they finally started playing and then Columbus won the uh, ignite cup, won the championship. Yeah. And if I had to do over again, I love making, but my commitment was to make him first. So I went over there one game and that was a game that Columbus clinched in, in the, uh, <laughs> in the championship in Columbus. So I missed the championship game because my first commitment was to make it and not Columbus. Yeah. I didn't realize that last year. He was like, well, are you doing both? No, I told Blair Floyd and make, and I told the ownership group sap and Charles Olson and all of them that I would do that. I would do make and commit to them first. So I missed out on some stuff in Columbus, but it's what it is. And that's just what, uh, just what I did last year, pretty much. Nature, nature of the business. That's awesome. I, I've heard, uh, I've heard that those two were, were rocking it down there and making. We just need, uh, we just need the fans to fill the barn up again. You got to support them, good and bad. I mean, well, you know, last time Birmingham was there, not not Saturday, but the last time before that, they almost threw four thousand people. That's they're awesome. they're there. The, the the crowd's there. The the fans are there. It's just a matter of having to mine that uh, that fan base out. Uh, if I could pick up the Coliseum and move it twenty miles north to the North Macon, or move it twenty miles south down to Warner Robins or Houston County, I think it would be it'd be a lot better off. But it's just in the middle of a the middle of Macon, where your fan base really is to the way to the north and way to the south of Macon, geographically oh, yeah. speaking. So. Who knows if it was a, the Warner Robbins mayhem instead of the Macon mayhem or the, you know, Monroe <laughs> County mayhem instead of the Macon mayhem. Maybe it'd be a different story, but uh, yeah, you got to do the best of what you got. So uh, exactly. yeah, definitely, definitely rooting for him and, and, and hate to see what's going on. Exactly. Yeah. So uh, so let's let's talk about Vermilion County now. I mean, when you heard they were coming into the league, I mean, what were your expectations for, for the franchise? <laughs> you know, watching the Danville Dashers 
they're a passionate group, but they're a small group. And actually, Ellen Tully actually was in Macon last year. She went around to Macon. I think she went to Birmingham, went to Huntsville, you know, got up with Keith Jeffries. Keith seems to be the, uh, you know, the the model, you know, citizen of the SPHL. If you want to emulate a franchise, go holler at Keith. But uh, she also went to Birmingham, I think, and also went up down to Macon and just was watching how things were done. So uh, they, they're they trying. I'll give you that much. Just And it was just a numbers game again. I think they had a head coach. It's kind of just like it is with Desjardins, you know. Yeah. He's behind the eight ball. He didn't come in until late. And just because of how the player turnover has been this year and just how it's just been unique with the visa situation in Canada with COVID and with all the teams opening back up, if you get if you got behind in the offseason, you couldn't catch up. And I think Vermillion and Macon are in, in that same boat as far as not being able to catch up in terms of getting a uh, you know, getting the roster filled. Yeah, and every time they get somebody good, uh, they they get called up. I mean, they're yep. one of their goaltenders is playing in the AHL. I think he just got called back down uh, to the coast, but but yeah, yeah, and I mean that's great for them, and and that's that's that I know that's what one of Ellen's goals was was to be a player development team, and it seems like they're doing it, but it's not uh, it's not working it's not working on the scoreboard for them, unfortunately, yeah. but. You don't expect a brand new franchise to jump into it and be number one in the league, but uh, yeah, I just I hope they can I hope they can manage. You know, at least they got a smaller barn to play in, and yeah. uh, and they do got a pretty good following. I mean, Macon does too. I feel like I kind of trashed that a little bit, and I didn't mean to. Uh, you know, I, I I love the Macon fans, but uh, so so hopefully Vermillion can get things going. And I had Joel Silverberg on uh, last week, the week before, and he kind of talked. He said he thinks they're just kind of building up so they have players to protect for next year right now. They're yeah. trying to get some talent, and, and I could see that. But, yeah. uh, and, but they're, they're two away from tying Louisiana for the winless streak, though. Yeah, of course. That's, that's not a Louisiana, record you want, right? <laughs> uh, Louisiana had 20, I think, last year before uh, they brought they – brought, uh, Killer they brought Kevin Kaminsky in. And I think Kevin turned the tide that season, and then the next season they tied Fayetteville for the regular season championship. So it can be done. You can, you can get somebody that can that can turn around pretty quickly in, in a league like the ESPY. But yeah, hopefully they don't get that dubious honor here this weekend when they uh, if they lose another couple or lose three to break the record. God yeah. forbid. Yeah, yeah, we don't want to see that. We don't. Yep. We don't want to see it. But uh, I don't know. I feel like the way that their schedule is laid out for the rest of the year, they might get that record. But hopefully, they get the other good record of the most players called up from their team. That's that's a good yeah. one that you can look at. That's, that's, a, that's an ironic one to have if you're on both. It's like both sides of the record book. You're on page one and you're on page one hundred. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the worst yeah. Record exactly. and then having the guys called up. So I mean. Exactly. So, but uh, so, all right, let's uh, let's move on to a team that's doing a lot better than the last two we talked about. Let's talk about Knoxville a little bit. They uh, they've kind of just quietly, it seems like, worked their way through yeah. the league. Everybody was talking about Huntsville, and you know, all of a sudden, Knoxville sitting on top of the the league. And and I mean, they've been number one a couple weeks back, but uh, it just it seems quietly they've kind of worked their way through the league. What what do you what do you feel about that team? I agree. I mean, it's been kind of silent. You know, Peoria. Peoria is Peoria. You know, Jean Guy is bombastic. Their media is bombastic. Their fans are bombastic. So Peoria, Peoria can't walk quietly anywhere. But yeah. I think you're right. Knoxville, Knoxville has kind of silently been that team to uh, to make the ascension up the standings. And I think they really they haven't kept a lot of guys from last year either. They, they're not a Huntsville. They didn't have a, a big core. A lot of those guys went back to the ECHL. Uh, they got one guy, Dino Balsamo, that played for Macon last year. He was player of the week, I think, uh, a couple of months ago. So they're they're making some noise and uh you know can't count Carr out can't count mike murray out it's, it's a great organization from top to bottom they've been around since day one they're one of the og sphl teams so i think they know what they got they have going on they got a, had a sellout this past weekend yeah you know, i'm talking off the ice of course but the on ice product of course matches that so uh that definitely I, I think i see them i think i see four teams that could really make a serious run and they're one of them, them huntsville Fayetteville, Peoria, I have as one of the four teams interchangeably, I think could, uh, you know, be there when, when the uh, music stops at the end of the season. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I think, uh, I think my four teams kind of fit in line with yours. I, I want to try to throw quad city in there too. I mean, they're sitting higher in the standings, but I, I don't know. I just don't get that warm fuzzy at this moment about quad city. They, they, they gave it to me early on, but uh, Hey, let's talk about them since we're going on. I mean, they started the season off really well and I was doubting them then. 
and they did really good and I became a believer and then they just kind of they I know it was call ups. They had a lot of call ups. Yeah. They lost a lot of I was gonna say the same thing. And so so um and, and they're kinda of, they're getting back into it and they're another one of those teams that uh, just keeps playing the same teams over and over again. And like I said, uh, Fayetteville always plays Roanoke and Quad City always stays plays Peoria. So yeah. so uh yeah, could talk to me a little bit about the Quad City Storm. They're having one of their best seasons they've had this year. Yeah, I mean, I, I think they're a lock for the playoffs. I don't think they're a lock for home ice playing stretch of the imagination. But uh, like you said, the call-up bug bit them, and then they, uh, you know, they had to get rid of Pierre DeSalvo and, and, and goal. He was the odd man out. And he's he kicked our ass the River Dragons last uh, weekend in with Danbury. So he, for for you Quad City fans, he found a home with the Danbury uh, hat tricks up and down the uh, Fed. But uh, I think Chesney will get turned around. I, I think he he'll put a. Uh, He'll put a finger on it and figure out what's going on. I, I don't see him falling much. I mean, I, I think they're they're fighting for maybe the they'll fight for that four seed, that final home ice spot. But uh, yeah, I, th- I think def- they're definitely in. But the call up bug definitely bit them too. Yeah, toward yeah. the uh, beginning there. Yeah, right now they're sitting one point ahead of Fayetteville. They got fifty six. Fayetteville's got fifty five. Fayetteville's in fifth. So yeah, that's yeah, uh, two games in hand too, though. So yeah, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, Quad City and Huntsville have played a lot of games. Well, hell, Knoxville has too. So there's still some teams down there making. And Vermilion County have only played 37 games. I don't know where they've been all season. They- <laughs> well, keep in mind, Macon had, the, had those road games where they had the, uh, the issues at the beginning of the season that they yeah. they're making up. I think I think there's a couple still to make up from them. So I think they're behind Vermilion. I'm not sure why they're behind in the uh, schedule. It's just how the scheduling when I get. So they're gonna yeah. get loaded up for the end. Yeah, I think Macon's playing Evansville at like 10 o'clock in the morning one of these days this week or oh, something. Yeah, some yeah, crazy yeah. early game. So, yeah, yeah, there's some on there. I, but uh, I got to look that up while we're on here. I decided we had to a, uh, Yeah, we had a school game here in Columbus when the Cotton Mouse were around. We played the Mississippi Surge, and all, all the kids were there. They had 6,000 kids, every, every hit, all the kids were screaming. We had a line brawl. We had a freaking line <laughs> brawl in that morning game, and these kids are like, "What is going on?" It's a five-on-five like donkey show, and we're just sitting here in front, we're like, "Oh my god, that's the worst possible situation you can have." And no, Wobby and great. Stephen Wobby, the head coach of the uh, Surge, and Bashard are like, "Like, what is happening right now?" <laughs> yeah, it was great. So that's yeah. Awesome. It was a yeah, it's uh, it's Evansville and Vermilion County that are playing. It's this Tuesday, so it'd be tomorrow because uh, we're recording here. So it'll be after when this podcast drops. It's going to be yesterday. So for all you yeah. listeners, so you already missed it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, in gotcha. Evansville. Well, Bessie, hope you didn't have a uh, hope. Hope that didn't happen in uh, Evansville on Tuesday. We're yeah, talking yeah. past in here. Yeah, I don't and know. I really, you know, that's a sneaky little race too, James. Evansville and Birmingham for the eight seed. Yeah, I think Birmingham can catch Evansville for that eight seed. I really do, and I know. I'm not being a homer. I'm not Coonsey. I love you. James, I love you. I'm not being a Birmingham homer. I promise you. I, I think that now with Kersey in the mix, with Kersey and Simmer getting things going and the roster changes and getting lots back and, and the big moves and roster wise, I think Birmingham is going to make a serious run for that eight seed. I really do. I think they're, they're going to separate themselves. You know, a lot of people want to put Birmingham together with Macon and Vermilion. I think Birmingham is by themselves now and can reach into that lower tier playoff seed teams with an Evansville, even maybe Pensacola that's on that uh, lower echelon of teams there. And Roanoke too. Roanoke's kind of free falling as well. Yeah. 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 I agree with you. I I think whenever Birmingham beat Evansville in uh, back-to-back games two weeks ago, being that's the team they're chasing and they were able to, to handle business. That's when I was like, this team, they, you know, and they they were they were behind both games too, and they they came back, and I was like, this team's got the heart, they've got the will. I mean, they can definitely do it. So it's just, uh, and and you know, they bounced back after getting shut out by Huntsville on Friday night, and they went into Huntsville's barn and beat them, and and they they beat them in 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 about as dominating fashion as Huntsville beat them on Friday night. So. And then uh, I was joking with some people. I was like, they can't lose these games to Macon anymore if they want to be a real no. playoff team. And and they yeah. did. You got you got to be the team below you. I, the, yeah. I think the only team, the only thing James, I think will stop Birmingham from making the playoffs is they only have sixteen games left. Yeah, I think yeah. time would be the only. If it, if it was an ECHL type season, I think they catch Evansville or they catch somebody for that eight seed. I really do. Yeah. They got a couple more shots at Evansville and a couple shots at Pensacola. So though, so they're sitting there with nine points out right now, and they were thirteen coming into the weekend. So, so yeah, I'm with you on that. I think uh, Birmingham. I mean, they've really turned the season around. So it's it's starting to be. You can see it too going to the rink. Um, and and 
that you know the fans are feeling it. the seats are there's more people coming into the seats because you know winning hockey games that that brings people in the seats you know oh, yeah. the diehards are always going to be there but the ones that don't want to spend their money to go you know because I mean, it's not cheap to eat or drink at any arena in this country in any country uh -huh. probably so nobody wants to spend their hard-earned money to go watch a team get beat down so i can't blame them there but uh, but yeah so let's talk about evansville actually we kind of talked about birmingham right there so let's talk about evansville they seem to be kind of fallen off here lately they they looked good early on and they're just it's almost like they lost themselves i agree i mean it's, it's them and roanoke as well i kind of put them in the same bucket uh i love brian billet too he's been around the league for a long time you know I, i'm kind of kind of have a goalie affinity if you haven't figured that out by now you know bill has been around he's, he was in pensacola he was in knoxville years ago so they have the talent i think but it's just you know guys like austin plevy too plevy played for knoxville last year so they've yeah. got the horses i just don't know what's going on what's going on there i think they've caught a lot of quad city and a lot of peoria they probably have a lot of them on the schedule too being in that little northern yeah. division if you will yeah so unofficial uh, northern yeah. division yeah, the northern <laughs> the unsaid division, the untold division. Yeah, yeah I think yeah. that. I think Roanoke catching a red hot Fayetteville team too. I think it's kind of the same, uh, kind of the same mo for them. So I could yeah. definitely see one, two out of three of them. I think Roanoke, Roanoke, Evansville, Birmingham. I two out of those three. I think get a playoff spot. It's just which two are going to be where the chair of the music stops. It's going to be really the, the telling tale here. I think. Yeah, definitely. I mean, and then you got. Uh, you got what we got Roanoke, who at one point they had won like I think seven of ten games, and I might be wrong. And now they've lost seven of ten games, and so they're they're not they're not looking not looking like they're playing in the right direction. And I don't know. I mean, they got the talent too. That's the thing that gets me. You, know, you get Jansen back there, and that is just I don't know. I know in Evansville scenario, I think maybe Billet's getting a lot of the workload, and and Peoria fans are going to tell me boo hoo hoo because their goalies played every game this year. Oh, right? yeah. Yeah, yeah, Levine Levine's just playing well, him there every game, but but at the same time, I mean, normal goaltenders, even if they want to play them all, they 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 can't. And I think that may be something. I don't know if I don't know. It doesn't seem like Billet has goalie fatigue, but at the same time, I mean, he's taking a lot of that workload on. Yeah, and I, I don't think he's built like a Levine, or I don't think he's built like a you know a Sean Bonner from Fayetteville, for example. You know they're comparing uh, Moran to him. Uh, speaking of Olberry being on, I think they're comparing their goalie to a to a Bonner. It, it takes a special kind of goaltender to be in net every single night. And if Bill it is that or is not that, I mean, I think we're we're getting that answer. So uh, yeah, yeah, we'll definitely see how it goes. But I, I think you know two of those teams are going to be in, including the Bulls. And I think one of those are going to be the one that, that's sitting out and it. Might not be Birmingham being the one yeah. sitting out. I really don't think that. Yeah. How do you feel about Pensacola right now? They had a pretty good weekend. They're, <laughs> they're tied for sixth. I mean, ha, ha, to me, that team is just hit or miss. You know, <laughs> just uh, I don't know. How do you feel about they've that? Got, they've got a lot of federal league guys. You know, yeah. Ivan Bondarenko, Karpinski, and Goal. They play for the River Dragons. It's basically the the River Dragons now have gone south and, and in Pensacola. Uh, but I think uh, I think Rod Aldoff is a very underrated coach. I think, you know, he turned around. He beat Macon last year. He finally got the guys buying in and ended up beating Macon last year. And, of course, everybody says, well, that's that was Peoria South. You had Alec Hageman and you had those guys playing for him. But I think they'll they'll get turned around. I think they might be fighting for that. I mean, maybe not home ice when all is said and done, but they'll be in that five, six seed. I think, I think they'll be okay. They're like Knoxville, I think, to me, James. They're one of those quiet teams that any given night, Hey, they put they put a baker's dozen on Macon and broke the record. You remember uh, about yeah. a month ago or so and broke the record there. So I think yeah, any given night they can explode offensively, and they're going to be one of those quiet teams that you don't want to have on the other side of a three game series. Just ask yeah. Macon last year. Yeah, exactly, exactly. That was, and then and they're also kind of they're, they're a physical team. A lot of people don't yeah. realize that, but they can they can get into they, they can they can play you skill and they can play you physical. It just Sometimes that that Fed experience falls, I think, to the to the veteran SP experience that we see. But yeah. Uh, but yeah, so yeah, they're definitely they're good. I don't. Do we talk about Roanoke already? We touched on them. Let's talk about Roanoke. On them. Yeah, have to talk about Peoria. Have to talk about them. Yeah, we'll get to Peoria. We got we got okay. Peoria, uh, Fayetteville, and Huntsville left after that. Got gotcha. you. Uh, so where do you want to go next? We want to go to uh, uh, hey, let's go with Peoria. That's yeah. Okay. Let's do that. I'm, they're the team to beat. 
I, I, I say that every year. Um, you know, people think that everybody roots against Fayetteville or roots against PR, I should say. John Dale deserves to have an SPHL championship. As, as an historian of the league, he deserves, he, he's got to get that feather in his cap. He's done a hell of a job. They're one of the model franchises in the league, like it or not. Everybody yeah. loves the New, the New York Yankees of the SPHL or whatever you want to call them. Everybody <laughs> loves to hate them. But he – and there's been a lot of turnover. There's been a, that's not the same team he's had. He's had a lot of turnover, but year after year, he turns out at least a coffee trophy, Not maybe not President's Cup champion, but he turns out a regular season contender year after year. I mean, yeah. I, I, I can't recall a time since they've been here where we've counted Peoria out as far as the top of the league. Yeah, I mean, right now they haven't they haven't lost in regulation in seventeen games. I right. mean, that's that's a ridiculous run they got going right now. And and uh, I mean, well, I think one of them was the Huntsville in overtime. And and uh, they, but yeah, I mean, they're just they're freaking wagon right now. And and you know, they people tend to forget their first weekend of the season was canceled. That's why they were hanging out around sixth or seventh in the league to start the season out. They didn't have as many right. games. And um, and they did. They they lost a couple to start the season off, but they've only lost five games all year long. So they were never really a, a bad team like it looked originally on the season. And yeah, I mean, I think they're they're definitely a threat for. Uh, I I don't know if it's going to be Huntsville, Peoria, or Knoxville taking home that uh, regular season trophy. I just or Fayetteville. I mean, I would count yeah. Fayetteville. I mean, they got some. I mean, I know they're they're behind. Let me look at the standings right now. I know you're looking too. They're yeah, they're they're back they're nine points right back. But they've got games in hand on everybody but except for Peoria. So I mean they can make a yeah. run too. But and they haven't they've only lost one in their last ten. So I mean they're yeah. definitely Fayetteville sitting there. Did we already talk about Fayetteville? No, we kind of did we kinda we kinda glossed over them. Yeah, yeah, no, we're all over talking about everybody else. <laughs> and that's you know, and Peoria too, I mean Fayetteville too, look at them. I mean, everybody thought it was gonna be the Bowen and Cookie show because Brian Bowen and Max Cook went down to Macon last year. The deal was they were going to come back to Fayetteville and light light a fire. Well, Bowen's playing in Utah now. Cookie's yeah. down in Florida in the ECHL. So it's a whole new roster there, too, and they're still rocking and rolling. So uh, yeah. it's great to see that. And I'm, I'm happy for uh, Chuck Norris and the ownership group up there in the uh, in Fayetteville, too. You know, they deserve to have a great team up there. They, you know, it, people forget the last legit season in the ECHL – or ECHL, I'm sorry, the last legit SPHL season three years ago, they were awful. I mean, they were beyond awful. I mean, it was – I think yeah. it was 20, 2019. Was that the year they had, they yeah. lost? They losing like 10 or 12 toward the end in yeah, a row? I think that was, that was the season before the COVID year because they were they were uh, like number one or number two in the league the year that uh, everything got shut down. They were they were a wagon that year. But the year before, yeah, they were – Yeah, the last full season. Let me look back. Yeah, 2018. Yeah. Yeah, nope. Uh, I'm thinking 20, 20, 17, 2018. I'm sorry. But still, they finished like seventh or eighth place in 2019, and in 2018 they were definitely yeah they were tenth place. They were 12, 38, and three, or 12, 38, and six. Yeah. So the last two full seasons before COVID, they really haven't had much luck. And like you, you know, last year they were like you said they were a wagon, they were rolling. But COVID paused that last year. Of course, they didn't play because of COVID, so they deserve to have a uh, a great team and a great finish. So I'm definitely rooting for them as well. Yeah, and I just want to say Chuck Norris has won a championship in the SPHL because nobody knows that that, that they just think I'm talking Chuck Norris, the actor. And <laughs> that's right. yeah, I still Chuck think that's the coolest owner name in the league. <laughs> I do too. Oh, I'm sure he's heard all kinds of jokes. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And and I've heard nothing but good things. I need to actually try to see if I can get him to come on the podcast one of these days. I've heard oh, he'd be a great guest. Stuff. But. Uh, but yeah, so let's uh, let's let's jump on to who else? So we got uh, Huntsville. We haven't talked about Huntsville, have we? Yeah, we kind of did. I think we've covered yeah. everybody. I, I think they get Milosic back. I, I'm, I was looking today at the Toledo roster, and I think they got a number of game again at goaltender. I I, wow. I can see them getting Milosic back down in Huntsville and making a run, yeah, making a serious run. Nothing against yeah. Steve. Steve Steve shut out the Bulls, but uh, Milosic, yeah. Milosic coming back and with the way Vorvas come on, I mean. Huntsville, yeah. If they get a couple of guys, if they get Newdecker back too, uh, if he ever came back, which I don't know, he seems to be doing a really good job up there. I haven't checked his stats lately, but uh, but yeah, yeah. Huntsville, Huntsville's not. I mean, they they're already an elite team in the league, but you add another piece like that and give them their goaltender back, you know, uh, watch out because it's going to be tough to score against them. So. Yeah, but it, you know, it's it's a chicken or the egg question. I think with Huntsville, is it the goaltending? And yeah, but I think nothing against Milo. Milo's hell of a goaltender. He proved himself in Toledo. But uh, it's Hunter Vorva 
an awesome goaltender or is it guys like Kaiser in front of him, you know, having rock solid defense in front of you? You know, you know that makes you an infinitely better goaltender if you got a great decor in front of you. So yeah. chicken or the egg, you know, car yeah. or the horse. What, do you, what are your thoughts? A, a good a good example of that would be uh, Routabush last year whenever he uh, he got waived by the Bulls and then he went on and had like the most incredible three-week stretch of an SPHL goaltender in Knoxville and everybody's like, oh, right. Craig Simchuk's an idiot. And I was like, no, 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 it's a different. The defense plays a lot better in Knoxville than the Birmingham defense was playing mm-hmm. last year and that makes a huge difference. Not to take anything away from Routabush because he's doing well in Roanoke this year as well. But, uh, but yeah, I think uh, – I think it's a little of both. I mean, you need you need a goaltender that can steal a game if your defense is having an off day, but you also need that strong defense, and and Huntsville has that. They have a guy that can steal a game if need be, but but uh, but yeah, I mean, it's it's that that's the way I look at it. Yeah, I think Vorva can too, but you look at his, his save percentage. I think is like nine two or close to nine thirty. But again, is that because the defense is blocking the hard shots and let him see everything that he's sopping or? Is it because yeah. he's making plenty of good saves? Yeah, he's got the number one save percentage right now at uh, 937 and 1.93 goals against. So, yeah, he's uh, he's definitely looking good up there. But he's only played 19 games. Levine's played friggin' 31 games. That's a ridiculous amount of games. <laughs> what, 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 how many games has Peoria played? 38? Uh, 30, 39, I think. Uh, let, me see. Let, me go, let me go back to I'm, – I've been kind of cheating and looking at the other uh, – tap. 39. So 31 yeah. out of 39. Yeah, and so I mean, the only other person close is Billet, who's got thirty-three games, and well, I guess not close. He's got him beat, but I mean, so you look at those two guys, and they're just carrying it all. It's uh, yeah, it's something else. It makes it makes you uh, it makes you appreciate that goaltending play a lot more whenever you see see that. But uh, but yeah, I mean, we were talking about Vorva, and, and I do think Vorva is a solid goaltender, and I think. Being able to have that mix, you know, to where, like I said, a lot of three on three, three in threes this year. And so, I mean, it, it'll be nice if you can throw Vorba in on a Saturday night or, or, and, and play Max on a Monday, Sunday, or vice versa. I mean, it's, I, I think that's what a lot of teams really want to be able to have. And, and that's something that, that going back to Birmingham, they have that. And, you know, a lot of people look at the numbers. There's a lot of goals against Lots and Stewart this year, but, but you got to look beyond that those are two solid goaltenders and you can place any either one of them you know Stewart was the best was the player of the week last week he he let in three not bad and uh lots went on and played the other two games and they won both of those games so that makes Birmingham a scary team as well and that's enough yeah. of me being a homer right there <laughs> no I think that's where I think that's where Kevin Kerr helped where as Simmer was more the offensive physical minded type person yeah. I think Kersey is more of the uh defensive minded kind of kind of guy. I mean, I think that's where having him in the mix kind of helps out and kind of settles things down on the uh, decor and, and helps out with the goaltenders too. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, I think we covered pretty much everything. So I, I got, I got, uh, I got one more question to ask you before I let you go. Uh-oh. Give me, give, give me, uh, give me your prediction. Who are going to be the two teams in the finals? I think Peoria gets it. I think Peoria gets in and I think it's, I, I don't know. I'd, I'd love to say Fayetteville keeps that hot streak up, but I think they run into somebody. Uh, I would love to see a Peoria Huntsville rematch from 2019 again. I, I, th- I think that might be what it boils down to, especially if, uh, if Milo makes his way back South, I think it's a Peoria Huntsville rematch all over again. I think Peoria is one of the two. Definitely. Yeah. And I, yeah. I think it might be it might be Huntsville at the end of the uh, end of the day in the on the other side. But again, and I, I best of three, any given you can get a hot goaltender and anything can happen. Just ask Macon last year, for example, or just ask just ask Peoria yeah. all the, the past seven or eight years, if you will. A couple so. of years ago, they picked Roanoke to beat them. That was uh, that, that right. was something else. So, but uh, but yeah, well that's uh, that's all I got for you, man. I really appreciate you coming on. Say hello, Colin. <laughs> he's been following me to the River Dragons games, and he was uh, he's about one and a half. He don't remember the Cotton Mouse very much. Remember, he, uh, he knows the Dragon Zone. He's been with me to uh, to Macon several times and to Birmingham too. So nice, nice future hockey player right there. Maybe so, maybe so. Yeah, he's got thumbs up. There you go. Yeah, yeah, he's thinking so. But uh, but awesome. Well, like I said, man, I really appreciate you taking some time. Uh, I've been meaning to try to get you to come on the podcast for a while now. I knew I knew it'd be a good one. So. Like I said, I, I really appreciate it, and and we'll definitely have to catch back up later on in the year. Maybe we could talk sometime in the playoffs and and uh, and and see and 
And then uh, maybe everybody won't call us both idiots for thinking Birmingham has a chance at making it in. So <laughs> yeah, hopefully not. I still I still stand by that. But yeah, love yeah. chopping up with you. You know, being around the league since day one. I mean, I was in Columbus when we drew the original eight teams out when it was Huntsville, Knoxville, and Orlando. Florida, the Florida Seals were still in the league, and Winston Salem, yeah. and and all that. So I love watching this league. I love Doug Price. I love what the league is doing. So I'm always going to be a fan, even though I'm with a fed team right now in Columbus. I'm always a, a, a fan of the SP and I always kind of follow what they're doing and what the league's doing. So happy to be on. I appreciate it. Yeah, definitely. All right, man. Well, I'll, uh, I'll let you go and uh, you have a good rest of the night. All right, James, take care. Have you got yeah, a great show. You got to help doing a hell of a job. Keep up. I right, thank you. All right. Well, there you have it. That was Dana Barker. Uh, as you see, he's uh, he's a wealth of knowledge in the league. He's been around it for a while. You know, he worked with Macon. Uh, he worked with the Columbus Cottonmouths. I forgot to uh, throw that in there at the beginning. But um, it's always nice to have somebody else come in and kind of give their perspective around the league. I didn't uh, I didn't bore you guys by going through game by game, but um but I do want to actually real quick tell you guys that if you missed a couple of games, they kind of spread them out pretty good. And there was some games on Sunday and uh, there's, there was some, there was some pretty intense uh, games going on that, uh, you know, the Knoxville Fayetteville series was an awesome series over the weekend. Um, I, I don't know. Can you call two games a series, but you know, that was a good one. Um, if you're bored, you know, or if you're at work and you don't really feel like working and you're going to watch YouTube videos for two or three hours anyways, um, not saying that's what everybody does, but maybe I do. Who knows? Hopefully my boss never listens to this show. But uh, but uh, yeah, check out those games. I mean, there was a couple of good ones this past weekend and um, it's only going to get better. I, this this is we're getting into playoff hockey. These teams down in the bottom, they're starting to fight their way in. You know, I mean, Evansville's got Vermilion County at that 10 o'clock game. And on uh, well, it'll be yesterday. So uh so Oh, never mind. But um, that that should be a good game. Vermilion County took Peoria to overtime, and uh, you know I'm I'm not counting them as a slouch. Peoria and Vermilion County are going to play uh, again on Thursday, and um, I think that's the 40th time that Peoria is going to play them. But I'm still not taking anything away from Peoria. But you got Quad City and Fayetteville coming up this week. That's going to be good. Uh, Roanoke and Knoxville, you know, Roanoke's not, they're, they're not a pushover. Yeah. They're having, um, having a, a little bit of a rough stretch, but I think, uh, going up against Knoxville will be a good one. And then, uh, you got, uh, Pensacola and Birmingham on Friday night. That's, that's a game that's battling for playoff position. Birmingham needs every point they can, if they want to catch one of those three teams, Pensacola, Roanoke or Evansville. So, um, you got that. And then, um, but yeah, Fayetteville and Quad City is going to probably be one of the better series of the weekend. You know, both teams are physical. Both teams got talent up front. Um, both teams are so sick and tired of playing the same other teams that they play. Quad City playing Vermilion County and Peoria all the time. Evansville, you know, and uh, Fayetteville playing Macon and uh, Knoxville and Roanoke a million times. There, it's 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 going to be fresh teams we get to see out there uh, out there on the ice, but. Um, but yeah, I mean, check out some of these games. I know, I know you guys that are listening, guys and gals out there that listen. You, you know, you're you're fans of specific teams, but uh, but you're if you're if you if you got another game out there, you know, you're waiting to watch your game, and there's another one on there. Flip the other games on. You're missing out on some really good hockey late here in the season, and and I definitely suggest, like I said, I suggest watching some Fayetteville Quad City games this weekend. That's going to be a big series. They're playing three and three against each other uh sunday i know everybody's team's not playing sunday so you don't got an excuse 3 p.m eastern to central it's early in the day i mean you know get you some lunch sit down maybe grab you an adult beverage or grab you a coke or whatever you call it where you're at i don't know i mean we're spread all over the place is it a pop is it a coke is it a soda for me, I just call it exactly what it is because I've been around enough that I just call, hey, can I have a Pepsi? Can I have a Mountain Dew, a Sprite? Whatever it is that I want because I got so sick of getting made fun of for, for what I called it. So, but anyways, how the hell did I get on that? Anyways, I do suggest watching that series this weekend. And I, 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 I'm telling you guys, we are in for a great final stretch down here uh, of the season for these teams jockeying for playoff position. I mean, nobody's locked in number one. Nobody's locked in number two. Nobody's in three. Nobody's locked in anywhere. We have two teams locked into the playoffs. We got uh, 
Knoxville and Huntsville. Peoria is probably going to lock themselves into a spot this weekend. I think they only need one more win. Well, I don't think. I know. They just need to win one more game. That's all they need to do. So uh, Peoria is going to be locked in, and and um, I'm not even going to try to guess on uh, how they're at. Maybe I'll do some math, and then I'll remember tie-breaking scenarios, and maybe in the next week or the week after, I'll, uh, I'll try to bore you guys with uh, playoff clinching scenarios. Or maybe I'll just wait until it's playoff elimination scenarios, and I could tell you when teams will be eliminated. But, uh, but yeah, that's enough. That's enough of me talking. I, uh, I appreciate you guys all listening. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. It was a great episode, a couple of awesome guests. I always love to bring other people on and uh, get their perspective, you know, whether it's from like Dana broadcaster's perspective or uh, Oliveri's uh, uh, player perspective. But, um, yeah, it was great. It was great. Uh, that's it. That's all. I've said uh, um about 42 times, I think. I hate whenever I say that. That's why I never re-listen to my podcast, and that's why I don't blame people if they aren't listening to mine. But I do appreciate you guys listening. You've been listening to the Inside the SPHL podcast. Got a topic you'd like discussed? Follow James on Twitter at FPH Bulls. For the latest news on the SPHL and the rest of minor league hockey, download the Field Pass Hockey app, now available in the Apple and Android app stores.